This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Than the, than the other one. I miss the other one. Talk into the mic. That's I, the mic I miss the other one. You, you miss the other one? Yeah. Why? What? Hey, mister. Wait, mister. Wait, wait a minute. Mister. Hold on a second. What? What? Oh. The cheap light you bought me. Hey, there we go. You're on air now. Yeah. Okay. So we're on the air. We're on the air. And that's uh, that's uh, 30 minute Marjorie. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight we'll make it to 40. You'll make it to 40? I don't think so. Maybe 45 minutes. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I, in fact, why don't you do the show and I'll go to sleep? Let me tell you something. It is getting fucking cold. It's going to be 23 with the wind chill. Yeah? Tomorrow it's going to be below 20. It's going to with the wind chill. Yeah, with the wind chill. With, that's my wife, by the way. 30 minute Marjorie. 30 minute Marjorie. 30 minute Marjorie. 30 minute. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a good spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but it, no, it was really, it was, I went out today uh, because I had to go get, I, I, I'm Mr. Fix It around the house. I'm well, expected. I'm delighted that you're doing something. It's important. What? <laughs> I mean, oh, this, yeah, yeah, this was something that really monopolized my time. <laughs> well, it gets you out of the house. It got you out for, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, I guess. Well, anyway, what happened was last night, yesterday, uh, something went out. A light bulb. The light bulb in the oven. oven. Now, I, I in my whole life have never had to replace a, a light bulb in, in an, an oven. oven. Now, please, Not too many people have. L- let me make this seem like I really did something exceptional. <laughs> But really, it's very simple once you go, you, you always go online to find out about these things. That's and so true. I went online to find out where the bulb was, because when you looked in there, you yeah, couldn't really see it. And then there was this hump there. And what that was, is it has a little wire thing, you move that apart, take the thing out, it's a dome, kind of a protective dome right. for the light. Underneath it is this little light bulb. You unscrew it, so I went up to the uh, hardware store. Oh, they had it at that point. Oh, one. yeah, they had it. I think most hardware stores okay. would have what they call They call it appliance light bulbs. I guess they're made to take care of cold or heat, heat. or whatever. And uh, now, uh, then I came home, and I p- screwed it in, and then I put the dome there, and then I flipped over the wire holder. And, and there you go. And, and now maybe it's another 10 years before the light bulb goes out. Because who knows, that light bulb may have been in there since the very beginning. No, because, well, it has, because I've used it. What? Huh? I've used it. Yeah, but I mean, since before we moved in, it was working. Oh, who knows? Yeah, who knows how long. Yeah, that light bulb could have lasted for 15 years. You don't know. I'm just amazed that a light bulb will last that long in a heated oven, but I guess that's why it's an appliance light bulb. Light bulb, but it's specially treated, I'm sure. Uh, something like Cause that. Because otherwise it would pop. But anyway, and... Um, you know, that's a great thing about the internet. Anything I've ever had to fix. You remember the, uh, our dishwasher went out one day where it just, no matter what button I pushed, nothing would work, nothing would light up or whatever. Exactly. And by the way, it stopped on its own today and I yeah. had to restart it. I think that happens every once in a yeah, while. Yeah, but anyway, so I, I couldn't figure out, I couldn't turn it on. It wouldn't go on. I figured it's broken. I'm looking up the, uh, I go online, first thing I'm looking for is the price of a dishwasher, right? But then I went, my dishwasher won't start when I push the buttons. Let me just put that in to Google. And the next thing I know, I've got... Slam the door. Boom. And no, no. And no, it, it was uh, uh, unplug it and then replug it again. Where's the plug? Well, there it, the plug's in the back, but I didn't have to do that. What I did is I went to the fuse box. Ah. And I turned off the... Played around for a while and found the power switch for the uh, oh. dishwasher. Turned it off, turned it back on, lights work. I was ready to buy a whole new dishwasher. <laughs> so I'm Mr. Fix it around here. Tell them what I did for the closets. What did you do for the closets? Well, when you opened up the closets, you couldn't oh, see anything. Not in, in the my closet. It's pitch black. 
the one where I keep my coats. Well, I'd have to put in a new one. Well, I'm putting in a request. Well, you didn't put it. Did you put in a requisition? I did. I did. I did. Uh, you have to fill out a requisition. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna create requisitions. No, what I tell him what, how did, I how I solved the problem. I don't know how he solved it. What do you mean? You, you have light in there every time you open it's true. up the door. He did. He he figured out how to put light in there. And there you go. Well, what I got was one of these a lights. A sensor, a sensor. These lights usually you get, you get for outside. Yeah, for movement. For movement. And I simply put them up there. And they when you open the door. Put the batteries the in there. In, uh, they, yeah. They're good for about a year. Yeah. And uh, every time you open up the door, the light goes on we, in the closet. And now you can see in the closet. We have one in every closet, including the linen closet. Yeah. Which is where all our pills are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but. It, it, where the drugstore it's, is. It's really good. If you open this door here, you can yeah. show them, yeah. you know, exactly what, what it does. And. and I saw, how was that for problem solving? Hey, you're huh? a problem solver. What what other problems have I solved? Well, today I had to fix the uh, the Ethernet. Oh, I'll connection. tell you what you did that was very good. The baby monitor. Oh yeah, here's what happened. This is great. Okay, we had a problem, and that was that whenever sometimes uh, you don't hear the bell come you, when somebody whenever comes whenever the post office would come by, they'd ring the doorbell and we wouldn't hear it right out downstairs. Right. So, because it, it, we have this rather large apartment that has very thick walls, and while I can, mm -hmm. he, oddly enough, hear the buzzer, buzzer from back here, you can't, can't hear it in the bedroom. Because it's on a different side. And because you're yeah. going deaf. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. And, and um, so what I did is I said, how am I going to solve this problem? So I figured, well, if I put a baby monitor on top of the refrigerator, which is near the buzzer, and, and then the I put a baby monitor in, in, our room. in our room. And the issue resolved. Issue resolved. So anytime we know a, a thing is coming, we turn on the baby monitor and we hear the thing. You know, so that was another one of my. It's so nice to have a man around the house. And then the today, house. today the uh, the whole Ethernet in went out. First, it did very badly in my in the guest room. I call it my room because that's where I'm banished to. It is his room because all this the, room is his. That room is his. Oh, 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 really? Oh, I go into and the guest And what is that room. over there? How often do I come in here? Well, I, I'm not stopping you. No, I can't put the television on, so I can't work. What do you mean you can't put the television on? Of course, you always tell me that you no, can't no, no, concentrate when I come in here and put the television well, on. Well, if I'm trying to do some work. Well, so there you go. Anyway. Anything so I've got this room that I've been banished to because she lies in the bedroom with the big 4K television set watching you know things like i don't know endless she watched 65 episodes of a <laughs> turkish soap opera novella <laughs> a, a, a turkish novella i did i watched all of them the leading man was so good looking yeah 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 it was it really was the plot really good was it was it did it keep you on the edge of your seat well, it kept me involved for 60 episodes. or did they have a lot of fans blowing wind into people's hair <laughs> they had that too they did huh yeah see but anyway so uh, so i'm banished to that room so the uh the um i've been that having trouble so with the ethernet it was it was going out on me and uh then I go into the bedroom, and I'm watching, and all of a sudden, the Ethernet is gone. And so I came in. I rebooted the Fios router. I think you're getting too technical. No, well, well the, 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 you know, the Ethernet, the, the, the Internet router, and everything came back to life. There you go. And, and also stuff in Mr. that room. Mr. Fix-It. In that room, it still may have a problem, but so far, no. You know, so then I can watch my shows. There you go at night i still have the i have still have arrow to watch last night thursday night's a bad night for me why all Be your programs everything at once last night was arrow orville uh better things i like better things. um what else was there there was tons of stuff coming through and uh i managed to get the most of it yeah. Oh, yeah. The Big Bang Theory, Young Sheldon, which I watched last night, which got good in the third episode. Uh, and then let's see here. What else? Oh, yeah. Mom, which I love. I think that's a wonderful show. 
Yeah, I know. You don't watch it. You're giving... What do you keep looking at the clock I'm, for? You I'm, aren't even close to 10.30. I'm just looking. And, it, it, and, I'm, and if, you don't, if you don't stop looking at the clock, I'm going to make this so boring it goes by <laughs> just really slowly. Slow. <laughs> well, talk about cold. Tomorrow they're expecting it to be 23. I went down with my friend Ann and, and her husband, Louie. We went down to the Whitney. They may call the show tonight. Yeah, and we went down to the Whitney Museum, and that's right on the water. And the rim is just... Oh, yeah, it wasn't, it was that cold. It was it like, was thir- wi- it was 36, it but was there the was wind. a wind. And yeah. tomorrow it's going to be... Well, when, the- I, I, when I went, uh, it's funny, if you're walking one place, you get wind. If you're walking another place, you aren't. If I was, go- when I got out of the building, going north south or south north the wind was just blasting when i started going up on the side east, streets west uh, east west all of a sudden it you know yeah, there was no the wind at all blocking it but we were right on the water and it was freezing. and the wind just drives the cold into you oh god and it's terrible it's terrible but anyway it's, it, it's cold everywhere in the country so you know why should we bitch it's the arctic freeze Arctic. Arctic. Freeze. Arctic. There's a scene. It's a Canadian freeze. Arctic. 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 Mm. Mm. I'm having coffee again tonight. I can smell so it. That means I'll take another Xanax to go to sleep and be a zombie tomorrow. Anyway, um, so, um, uh, you know, it's been, the, the weather's been, you know. Uh, and uh, so you're watching any good TV shows? I mean, you binge watch things and you're always you always have to have something on you can't just turn it off i read last night oh good that was a start yeah well i don't see yeah. you reading huh i don't see you reading no so there no you don't see me reading no i have crossword puzzles to do it's not reading i i've done hundreds of crossword puzzles <laughs> on my uh, on my ipad it's my crossword uh, okay but they're mondays i don't i and i will do some tuesdays and Wednesday, I've done Wednesdays. I've, I've actually gotten all the way through to Friday once. Friday's supposed to be the hardest, isn't it? No. Sunday? Uh, I think Saturday's the hardest. The Sunday, the trouble with Sunday, the reason I don't do Sunday. Because it lures you in. No. It, it's not the hardest one of the week. Friday But, they, is. but they do get progressively harder. Yeah. Tuesdays is harder than Mondays. Wednesdays is harder than Tuesdays and so on. But when you get to Sunday, though, it's not that it's hard. It's huge. Yeah. It's big. And um, my so, uncle Manny used to write them for the New York Times. Oh, really? Yeah, and he, they, you know, and those were the days without computers when he had to do it on a grid and, and play with it. Well, here's what's happening with me, okay? And it's it's a real problem for me uh, because I've done so many of these now, and I'm talking about literally, I must have done 300 of them, you know, and I get them done in under 25 minutes. When you're right. sitting on the can. And when I'm on the toilet, yeah, I'm getting hemorrhoids just from sitting <laughs> too long playing, doing the because I want to finish the crossword before I get off the can. So it's like a 25 minute toilet sit, right? So anyway, uh, I, um, uh, I I've done so many of these. I've got the logic of this down now. You know, there's certain words he uses over and over and over again. And so I just go, oh yeah, that's got to be blah blah blah. And well, it's it not one person doing it. No, one it, well, there's, there's one guy editor. that edits. It, right. it, it, what's his name? I'm trying to remember his name now. Will Shorts, who is the crossword editor right. at uh, at uh, New the Times. New York Times. And as the crossword editor, he edits the crossword, and he they it, it just seems that certain words keep popping up. Emu is used a lot. Emu, okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is one that God? I I did one one day, and then I did the next week on for the same day on a Monday, and he used it again, the same word. Maybe every Monday he uses yeah. it. You know, but there so there aren't really difficult words. But I guess maybe if I get over to Thursday and Friday, the words get tougher. I'm sure. What it is, they don't get tougher; they get longer. All right, and when you've got three letters or four letters pretty easy when you've got like seven letters across then it's Tough. more difficult yeah. because it could be any one of a number of words yeah. yeah so you know but i mean i've i've gotten to the point where where i'm kind of getting oh you know something i don't i i've just had a shot on you for this whole thing and i didn't go to a Nothing shot of the two of them. i think i you see this is how out of it i am now 
because I was looking at the thing and I went, oh yeah, there's two of us, and and I had it. So now now there's the two of us. Let's do this for, where for, we hold our for hands. twenty five straight Here. minutes. It's been nothing but you. And your point Did is. Did anybody say anything about that? Did anybody complain about it? <laughs> Let me see here. Hello. Uh, your picture is flashing. What's up with that? No, it's not flashing. It's something with your computer. Uh, saying, hey, hope, nobody nobody wrote that you were on your on screen for because the whole damn Because they're so enjoying thing. looking at me. Huh? They're enjoying you looking know, at me. Well, they're not gonna they're not gonna see just you anymore. They don't want to see gonna, a curmudgeon. In fact, maybe for the next couple of maybe for the next ten minutes, it should just be a picture of me. Go ahead. You know, then we won't have a picture of you, and you know. Where am I? Well, anyway. Ah. I, I, when are we turning this on? Oh, I am going <laughs> to turn to me now. Hi, everybody. <laughs> How are you? Gee. Should we open up the calls? No. No. I got ten minutes yeah, left. Yeah, but I think we ran out of things to say. No, we haven't run out oh. of things to say. You have a list? Yes. Uh, Louis C.K. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, Louis C.K., you know, I I feel a little sorry about Louis C.K. Because I thought his apology was nice. It was good. Well, uh, I'm getting to that. Okay. Uh, I feel sorry for Louis C.K. because, number one, I know the guy. And uh, not really well, but, you know, he did my show a lot in San Francisco. And um, maybe I should play Louis C.K. on the reruns this week. Yeah. Just to be obstinate. <laughs> to the world. Uh, and, and the guy did some stuff. He, all he did was, and I'm saying all he did was, he said to some women, you don't mind if I pull my penis out, do you? And masturbate in front of well, you. you well, and, and apparently nobody objected. That was the no, funny part of no, it. No, 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 no. Nothing, nothing was said. What what do you mean? Nothing was said by the Them, women. Yeah. By the women they saying. They didn't turn around and walk out. No, or... and no, no, don't do it. They just sat there. And he did and, it. And he did it. And um, uh, it, it, it's not like he attacked them or molested them or raped them or anything like that. But they had a look at his ugly penis. And let's... Well, you don't know that it's an ugly penis. I have never seen a good looking one, ever. Well, that's you. Well,. I would say if you really ask women... Well, if you would, ever had a chance to see mine... <laughs> if you <laughs> really ask women, it's not exactly a pretty well, body part. Well, and vaginas look like an open wound. <laughs> oh, boy. They suck everything in. What? Vaginas. They, oh, they, uh, <laughs> there's no light in the universe because it's sucked in... It's a uh, black hole. Light. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's Oprah. Uh... <laughs> Let me see here. Where are we? So anyway, I mean, it wasn't like he did anything really. He, he To begin with, he's a comic. He's known for being edgy. So when you hear that he did something like this, you would go, under normal circumstances, eh, eh, well, you know. I mean, well, what was the woman that was describing Harvey Weinstein where, where he did came in with her like that and she told other people and they said, it's only Harvey. <laughs> Yeah, it's only. Oh Harvey. yeah, that's Harvey. Yeah, well, I, I I don't know if anybody wants to see Harvey's crooked dick, but anyway, um, so I don't think that he did anything that was violating somebody. But he wrote a a, a retraction today or an apology. Well, somebody say some people say he didn't apologize. In oh, this, he did but, absolutely. But I think he did. I did too. Why don't and you I think read it? I think that this is the textbook. For anybody who wants to write an apology. A good one. A good one. Why don't you read it? Uh, yes. He says, these stories are true. Uh, I want to address the stories that were told in the New York Times by five women named Abby, Rebecca, Dana, Julia, who felt able to name themselves and one who did not. These stories are true. At the time, I said to myself that what I did was okay because I never showed a woman my dick without asking first. I said that last night. I said, you got to hand it to him. He was a real gentleman. He asked first. They wanted to see his dick. Yeah. Um, uh, without asking first, which is also true because that's what they said. They said he asked. But what I learned later in life, too late, is that when you have power over another person, asking them to look at your dick isn't a question. It's a predicament for them. Yes. The power I had over these women 
is that they admired me and I wielded that power irresponsibly. I've been remorseful, remorseful of my actions and I have tried to learn from them and run from them. Now I'm aware to the extent of which the impact of my actions, I learned yesterday the extent to which I left these women who admired me feeling badly about themselves and cautious around other men who would never have put them in that position. It's true. I also took advantage of the fact that I was widely admired in my and their community, which disabled them from sharing their story and brought hardship to them when they tried because people who looked up to me didn't want to hear it. I didn't think that I was doing any of this because of my position allowed me not to, I, I, I was doing, I didn't, I, let me read this again, I didn't think that I was doing any of that because my position allowed me not to think about it. There is nothing about this that I forgive myself for, and I have, to, I have to reconcile it with who I am, which is nothing compared to the task I left them with. Very good. Mm -hmm. I wish I had reacted to their admiration of me by being a good example to them as a man and given some guidance as a comedian, including because I admired their work. The hardest regret to live with is that you've done some you, that is that what you've done has hurt someone else and I can hardly wrap my head around the scope of that hurt I brought on them. I'd be remiss to exclude the hurt I have brought on people who I work with and who I've worked with and whose professional and personal lives have been impacted by all of this, including projects currently in production, the cast and crew of Better Things, Baskets, the Cops, One Mississippi, and I Love You Daddy, that's the movie he just released. I deeply regret that this has brought negative attention to my manager, Dave Becky, who only tried to mediate the situation that I caused. I brought anguish and hardship to the people at FX who have given so much. The Orchard who looked a chance, uh, who took a chance on my movie, and every other entity that has bet on me through the years. I brought pain to my family, my friends, my children, and their mother. I have spent my long and lucky career talking and saying anything I want. I will now step back and take a long time to listen. Thank you for reading. Very good. Uh, I think that that's, think, you know, the people, yeah. some people were complaining, well, he didn't apologize. Yes, he did. Well, the whole thing was an apology. It, 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 in tone, it is an apology. Absolutely. It is saying, I was wrong. I'm sorry I'm, for my behavior. Yeah, I'm sorry if I, or, you know, I, I, I realize the hurt I brought upon these people. I mean, I think it is the textbook for how other people should, should handle respond, the situation. Yeah. Uh, you know, somebody once told me that if somebody wants to argue with you about something, don't walk away from the argument, walk into it. And that's exactly what he did here. He walked yeah. into the argument. He didn't deny it. He said, yes, I did this, you know. But when you look at the totality of what he did, I mean, Netflix has dropped the special they were supposed to do with him. The movie has been pulled shelled. from distribution, has been shelled. He's uh, been disinvited to some type of award FX show. says that they're unhappy with him. And uh, uh, who knows what they're going to do? Because he's got about five shows on FX, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of which we love, Better Things. Love it, love it. Uh, She's great. It's a great show. Uh, and Baskets, which I wasn't crazy about, but it's it's a it's a big show on FX. So you know, uh, you know, a lot of these people are pulling these things, and again, it's without. A trial, and, and let's talk about the severity of it. If you want to compare what Louis C.K. did to what Harvey Weinstein is accused of, to what Kevin Spacey is accused of, to what even John Heilman is accused of, it doesn't even come close. It's not in the same category. You know, it was a misjudgment, uh, and, um, you know, I think that uh, we've we got to cut him some slack. How many people came after Heilman? Heilman? About six women. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I thought it was yeah. just one. Yeah, no. Uh -uh. Oh, honey. Yeah, what? I think it's time uh, for You me know, to it's roll. like you're, you're so anxious <laughs> to fucking get out of here that I had your stupid picture on for 15 minutes. Nothing for wrong with that. Um, should I roll over? Uh huh? What? Should I roll over? Let me see here. Hello, Alex. Hello. 
the screen was flashing when I tuned you in. The minute I posted that, it corrected itself. Yeah, because that's your goddamn machine. There we go. You want to come over here, right? Uh, yeah, you want to come Romeo over here. Over. Roll me over. over. Yeah. Romeo Let me see Romeo. here. Let me see here. I got to... What do you, I need that. I need that snot rag. <laughs> you know, it's important to me. It's, it's my favorite snot rag. Uh, let me see here. Where do I go? Oh, okay. Here I go. See, I mean, I, I, do you realize I oh, didn't? There's Anne. Do you realize? No, that's just she's offline. Oh. So, uh, did you realize that I uh, uh, that I that, uh, that I had you on for all well, that time? How would time? I know that? I mean, never allow me to come. Well, I and I've got to do something, you know, to prevent that from happening. What? Oh, what is this? Oh, here we go. Uh, but, 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 by the way, last night a guy called us that had the name Jack Bauer, and I didn't answer it because the guy was uh, uh, was uh, it, the name was too phony, and I, he wasn't where I could put him on and all of that. And well, he asked to be accepted. He, he asked to hold on a second. He asked to be accepted as a, uh, a what do you call it? As a guest. As a guest. As a contact. And I today I saw it and I accepted him. So Jack, or the guy who calls himself Jack Bauer, you know, uh, try hey, calling us again there tonight. He is. Here he is, ladies Look and at gentlemen. The studio, how nice it, what? Oh no, that's the wrong. That's the wrong uh, thing. I see. I can't do anything right tonight. I'm I'm just an absolute failure at trying to do this thing. Hi, Rob. Right. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. We'll go to Rob here. Okay. Now we can go to Rob. There Rob. we go. On that, I just lost my earphones. What? Can you turn that a little? Oh, turn that a little. Why? So they can hear you? Why, yeah. should, why would they want to hear you? Why would I want to sit over here? Yeah. I was listening to you talking about Louis C.K. And um, I, I, can't, I, I can't forgive that because you're taking advantage of these people. What goes on in your mind power. when you power. decide that you're going to do that? It's a power trip. I, you know, I've been in radio and I didn't have any kind of success like you had. Oops, I'm going to turn my speaker off there. Um, and when you do have somebody who looks up to you, the last thing I thought about was taking out my dick and jerking it off in front I mean, of me. I would never pull out my dick and jerk off in, uh, even if I asked her first. You know, so, I might even so, be a little bothered if she tried to pull it out for me. You know? What gets me is the fact that who is this individual who thinks to do this? And yes, he apologized, but in my mind, he's trying to save whatever semblance of a career he's got left. So I don't take the yeah, apology. But wait, a minute, as, but wait a minute, let's look at the incident and let's compare it to all these other claims by people against people. This is kind of small stuff. Agreed, but that doesn't make it any better. Well, well where do you draw the line? Uh, you know, yeah, and, I mean, and, and and do we put him in the penalty box for a little while and let him come back out eventually? Yeah. Okay. I, right. I don't think he's a uh, look. He, he could he could uh, if if it was a crime and he went to prison and he comes out of prison and he's done his time, then he should be allowed to go back out and make a living, right? Yeah. And if you don't like him because you think, oh my God, what kind of man does this? And then you won't pay attention to him anymore or anything he does. Yeah. But he should be allowed to release a movie or to do a comedy special now might not be the time and that's why they've canceled everything yeah. but i just I, I don't know you say we should cut him some slack to me yeah i have a problem with that only because what kind of man does that yeah so what kind of man i'm gonna have to call back all right well then call all right call back call back call back call back call back i'll hang up yeah. on you as a matter of fact i'll help you <laughs> Uh, I thought it was a filthy uh, night. I thought so too. <laughs> you know, but I guess maybe he decided not to go scuba diving or something. Where's Louie? Uh, uh, don't just stop it. If they want to call, they'll call. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, it, it's just that I don't know. I mean, I just I think I think the the apology that he wrote uh, was. A textbook way to write an apology. It was very, it's very good. eloquent. Yes, it's very well, eloquent. It, you know, yeah, no question about and, it. And not, no, not, and not trying to excuse his behavior in any way. Right, but so perfectly crafted. Sometimes that bothers That's me too. His well, I mean, maybe I mean, it's perfectly is... crafted because he knows how to write. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't help that. You know. True. 
True. But I mean, I think the fact I, I think this is a textbook for how you handle this situation. You know, actually, it might work in his favor because it's out there. Yeah. Can you hear us now, Phil? Yeah. Uh, when I asked to join the ongoing call yeah. instead of a fresh call, yeah. and then I'm able to get in. Oh, OK. Well, we, we, I, if you were in. We just couldn't hear you. That's all. Well, I couldn't hear you. I thought you were. I, I thought you weren't going to be here tonight. I took an earlier flight. Uh, I was able to get a 4:45 instead of an 8:30 out of uh, Orlando, and uh, I'm in Key Largo. So, oh. oh, so you you got to you got to the Keys earlier than you thought you would. Yeah, and I'm really glad I did. I was tired. <laughs> I I see. How bad is the devastation there? Is it still really bad? Uh, Not Key bad Largo, enough for it, my it money. Didn't look like anything. Huh? Yeah. Uh, at Key Largo, it didn't look like uh, any devastation. Well, which was the key that uh, really got hit bad? No uh, key, key, got West. Oh, yeah, key, key West. Key West got hit bad? Really bad. Yeah, and uh, Marathon Key, which is around the middle of the keys. Yeah. And, they, and actually, you know, everybody calls them keys, but they're really called Ks. Did you oh, know that? Are they? Yeah. Really? Well, like CK. Yeah, I mean, the key is a key. <laughs> when you see, see it spelled, it's Q U E. No, no. So that's oh, K-A-I. No, it's not K E Y. No, that's the way people. Uh, the way I, it is on a map. Yeah. Keep, really? No. Yeah. 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 Well, when I was when I lived West. there, I was told they were called K's. My name for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they were named after uh, the guy you've been talking about, Louis C K. Yeah, Louis C K. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, um, um, y y oh, here comes Jeff. Let's see here. We got Jeff. All these people are where they normally aren't. Like uh, Jeff is uh, on vacation now, or he's away from home. Where are you calling from, Jeff? What city are you in now? I'm in Atlanta. Okay, so so oh, it, it's kind of nice. We've we, where before we used to have somebody calling from uh, uh, the West Coast, uh, the West Coast, and then somebody from uh, Connecticut. Now it's you know. Next week, I'll so, be in uh, Plano again. You'll be Plano. in Plano again. Yeah. Well, that's redundant, though. We have shows coming out of that part of the country. That's true. You know? <laughs> yes, Jeff. Well, I listened to what Rob said a few minutes ago, and it, and it was it was very well put together. And I like your opinion. And uh, I think, I think uh, and, you, you uh, took the approach of this is not what a man should do, I, well, no, no, no. You know, I think we not, all. I think just, we. I think we all, all agree that it's in, in inappropriate behavior. That's yeah. there's no question about that. But still, uh, you know, I think this thing was as as sincere as anything I've heard out of this whole, uh, as I call it, fad that's going yeah. on of, just, of trying just to out like these people. People would like to see Trump fall. Uh, Louis C.K.'s politics and mine are certainly not on the same plane. But on the other hand, I believe that you need to forgive people. People aren't perfect. They make mistakes. And uh, you can't condemn uh, someone for these mistakes. He came to a realization. Yeah. And it's time maybe you, you give a guy a break. He didn't come to a realization. Somebody outed him. Well, he got he outed and it made him... But it doesn't matter. You, you, you're not. You don't think that you're going to get caught until you get caught. You know. Okay, but don't give him credit for coming to a realization. He wrote a very well crafted. He, he probably sat down for a long period of time and thought to himself, "What's my best option here, and how can I present myself in the best light?" It like, sounded sincere. Do you think that? You know? Do you think that well, maybe he wrote that? He wrote writers, that from as, that Alec he wrote Patrick. that from the bottom of his heart. Hello, are you there, Patrick? Yeah. It was very well written. Patrick, was, you, well, hold on a second. Patrick, are you there? Sort of here and not. I'm going to kill it and come back. Okay. okay. All right. Hey. Fine. I don't know and, if from the bottom of his heart, I, it may be just a career saver. See, that's it, the thing. Well, you see, you're always going to get suspicious about that in, yeah, in any yeah. event. But let's for a moment maybe give him the, credit, uh, the benefit of the doubt that this was written based upon how he genuinely feels. You know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just think that you can't, you know, people make mistakes, he, you know, and I'm not writing it off. I mean, what he did was was awful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would even forgive Renee for the same thing. But, you know, I, I just think it's... That's it's, funny. It's, I thought you wouldn't forgive you for it. That's the 
<laughs> but uh, you know, it's don't be it's whipping just... that thing out in front of me unless you think Lorena Bobbitt has gone <laughs> off. <the bridge. laughs> the moment one of those things comes out and it's not supposed to be out. Well, well last or night, I last ask night, for it, and your hands well, not on CK, it, jerking it CK up and down. CK stands for seacock. You know, yeah. but anyway, it, it, well, I mean, last night on this show, I said, you know, you got to give the guy credit. At least he asked permission first, you know, right. uh, and well, uh, but he didn't and wait today, for an answer. He didn't wait for an answer. Well, I mean, okay, so, uh, to begin with, let me let me just say this. If if Louis, you were in a room with Louis C.K. and he said to you, Renee, do you mind if I pull out my penis? What would you say? I would start looking for the fire extinguisher. Wait, 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 or no, a no, sharp no, 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 forget about that. Worse. You know, he's asked it's you. It's time to say that the, the yeah, night he, is he, over. He, he, wait a minute. Yeah. He, he's asked you. To, wait a minute. Let me. I'm asking you. No, that's not what I'm asking you. That's not what I'm asking you. He asked you. He asked you. He literally asked you for permission. What would you say? No. Okay, fine. <laughs> now, that's the one word that doesn't seem to have come out of any of these women's mouths when he said, do you mind if I pull out my penis? Dick, so the what a question. Dick. <laughs> the question is, who are these women and what did they want from him, right? Well, uh, you know, the, but the all, I'm saying, all I'm saying happens. is there, there are two options here. One option Wait, is saying, no. hey, big boy, keep your dick in your pants. And the other one is to just turn around and walk out of the room. And none of them did. Right. They just stood in there my, and in looked my at it. 64 years, uh, it usually happens where right. it's a mutual thing. And, you know, you're, you're making out, you're doing you something, and all of a sudden... Out. The, the woman, you know, starts unzipping it, and 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 you know, and you're there. You don't walk into yeah, a room and talking, say, "Hey, yeah, can I you, pull you out my penis?" You're talking about I mean, an entirely different dead, venue dead. here. Yes, uh, yeah. uh, Mark. Hello, Mark. Hi, Mark. Or Richard. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, this this literally sounds like a yeah. plot from one of his shows, almost. You know, it's shows, like shows. Yeah. It, it could it, be. And it. Man, what what was he thinking? Well, that's the question. Let me exactly. let me let me say this. I have hung He's out. A moron. I know I've hung out with comics and in that whole world. All right. Have and, they asked you if they could whip out their dicks? No, but I can see where. Uh, it is. This it's one. It's a power. It's a power thing. No, I don't think uh, it's just a power thing. I think it has to do with there's there's a whole mindset in the comedy scene you no know. i never saw uh -huh. that well you weren't yeah. around it as much as i was phil <laughs> maybe not yeah. but i mean i, I knew out, i knew it, a lot of the people wait, you did and they weren't pulling their dicks out it, you know wait a minute, wait a minute. they were so, they right, were so okay insecure. rob 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 is saying something yeah. well they, they were so insecure they didn't want anybody to see their dick all right did he, <laughs> did he finish the transaction did he uh come supposedly he jerked off Okay, so now, well, and, then now we're on the floor. And, and believe me, I don't know. I have for all you guys here, and I'm sure you have jerked off in your time. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I would assume all of you have because Tony isn't here. Uh, <laughs> all the jerk off because <laughs> uh, Tony isn't here. But uh, um, I, um, my question to you would be, how fast could you jerk off? And See, I, do, I think he certainly was taking a long enough time that they could have turned around and walked out of the room. It's not like he attacked them. It's not like he not locked the, the that's, door. That's not the point to me. It's, I want to go back to your thing about, you know, comedians and, you that's know, what? bullshit. You whip your dick out for two seconds as a joke. Okay, maybe, you know, that's a little bit nuts. But to stand there and whack it in front of somebody <laughs> till completion. Nah. It goes beyond a joke. Well, I don't wait a minute. You weren't there. You don't know how funny he did it. <laughs> did he do it on top of them or on the floor? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, who, I, I don't uh, think there's been any answer to that, uh, but it's amazing. You, how far was the arch? It's amazing that we're having this discussion at he? all. Okay. It doesn't matter. He didn't look any better when he was younger, so it doesn't matter well, what he looked it, like. It, it works better. Yeah. Uh, uh, it first, uh, Patrick had his hand up, and then Jeff. Patrick. Well, the one time that I had to do oh, it, it Jeff. was for a urologist. Okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah, to make it and I, oh, wait a minute. I had to do Sperm it. Bank. I, Sperm I, bank. I had to do it once for a group of medical students. 
from Korea or, uh, or, or China. Uh, when I had the clap and they were giving me a workup at the health uh, clinic. clinic here in New York, because I decided to go to the health clinic instead of a doctor because it was on the weekend. And, I brought everybody and, in. and they said, listen, we have some students here from China. Do you mind if they come in and watch the examination? <laughs> and my pants are down with my dick hanging out. And I said, sure. And I figured maybe one or two students are going to come in. It was like 20 people. <laughs> and I'm standing there with my dick hanging out. Right. Turned out I didn't even have the clap. I had NSU, nonspecific urethritis. <laughs> you know. Yes, Patrick. I just want to say, if I walked in a room with Megan Kelly mm -hmm. and pulled down her panties and started playing with herself, yeah, I'd be okay with it. <laughs> <I'd> be okay. <laughs> Nothing whatsoever. She could finish. I'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah. So you wouldn't feel like she was having you on a power trip, huh? I even if she wa even if she was, I'm. I'm just, she wants it to take advantage of you. That's okay. <laughs> she can. It would be okay if she wrote you a nice note. <laughs> or if she asked per permission to pull yours out. <laughs> she wouldn't have to ask permission. <laughs> okay, well, do you, any of you mind if I pull out my dick right now? I mean... Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, we, go ahead. As long as it's below, as long as it's below the uh, where we can see, yeah, yeah, I don't care. I could not, I could not be wearing pants now. I, can you imagine? And there are a couple times where I thought about it. No, I'm not going to do that, John. With all we you saw, can't see me. With all we saw working together on Midnight Blue years ago, can you imagine oh, yeah. we're even having this discussion? <laughs> yeah, no, but, it's no, it's a, it's a discussion. No, I I'll tell you, I'm I think you know. I'm sorry, Lucy. Louis C.K. is a is a fucking perv. That's why I think if he's going, I mean, is he he can't really whip it out and say I'm just having fun. Right. He he was he was hot for these women and wanted to, you know. How, I don't know. It's just it's, it's creepy as hell. I mean, I like his I like his comedy, happen. but you know, personally, that's. He should have well, look, really uh, been look, a little bit all, more we are all in How, how, how yeah. long ago yeah. Wait a minute. did these incidents happen? And were they drug-induced? Was there a party going on? Was this, you know, no, this, was, was this there was other crazy. stuff? He, or this or did he lighter, just walk into somebody's wait, 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 office? Wait a minute. John is trying to answer your question. Oh. It, I mean, I, I read the whole. I read the whole thing in the well. The Daily News, of course, had of they course. have like three pages. It's like every. I think they're going to have a special section of you know today in perversity. You know? Oh, uh, John, uh, they have a scratch and sniff section exactly. uh, for the CK yeah. come. I got the. I got my volume. You got the scratch and sniff. <laughs> so so what was the what was the circumstances surrounding these five that have come forward i don't know how many five but at least two or three of them were were writers co-writers with him on some of the uh programs earlier programs that he was involved in with in the writing pool yeah. and yeah they were it was just like when the two of them were together it wasn't you know other people weren't around or something and it was him and, and a woman then he would do this, I guess. I don't know. It's like weird. It seemed to be, you know, not all of them maybe, but most of them tended to be co-writers, not somebody. He, do you think he was trying to free up his imagination or something, or loosen up, or try heroin, or try a hey, LSD? Al Alex, uh, I think your camera's off. Are you pulling your dick out? Is that why your camera's off? No, it isn't off. Yeah. Not off. Oh. I see him. Oh, on the Skype, oh, it's off. I see him. It's not, it's not on and with that, on guys, the, the, I'm saying good night. Oh, oh, night. Why you all whip it out and yeah. have a good time. Can you all see? <laughs> can all you people see me? Oh, I can see you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Phil. It's you. Lennon, sure. The whole deal. It must yeah. be me. I'm, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, all right. iPad is not the best. Uh, uh, it's not. No, it's not the best. I don't Are know. you doing this whole thing off an iPad? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Well, it's I, easy to carry. You know. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Well, certainly. Yeah. If you're have, running through the the yeah. keys, it's probably better. All or I'm the saying. All I'm saying be. is, and let me go to Renee next because she had her hand up. Is, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These, you know, all you guys are gentlemen. All right. You know, and I'm a gentleman too. I would never <laughs> consider ever doing something like that. But all I'm saying is, there's an atmosphere in comedy which I, I, I don't know how to explain it. 
But it, it, where this might, in some situations, be considered excusable behavior, I, I hate to say that, but no. you know, but it's the nature of that business. L let me, Renee. Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. What Louis C.K. said in his letter is going to allow him to pivot off of this, mm -hmm. where some of these allegations for some of these people, it, 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 they're they're going to just. Yeah, they're gonna, yeah, it's gonna exactly, it's gonna kill him. So it, this is gonna at least allow him to pivot and still have a career. Uh, who's got his audio up? Uh, I was just looking at the Facebook uh, on my phone. So uh, yeah, well, well, don't uh, do that. Don't do. I, that. I turned it down. Yeah. Um, uh, in, uh, yes, uh, 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 Rob. So I mean, you know, I know that in my years of broadcasting, both in radio and television, you are faced with uh, college students who come to work at your radio station, and you work with these people. They're, I remember, very lovely women, and you are looked up to. I'm sure you've experienced it, you know, at various radio stations you've worked at. Y you just don't, you know, I, who thinks? You know, I got these girls here in the studio. I think I'll whip out my dick. I, I just don't know where that comes from. I don't. I can't get over that. I just don't understand it. I. I mean, look, you could be kinky. You could have fun with your partner and do all kinds of crazy shit. I'm good with that. Yeah, but but let me let me ask you. You know, I mean, I'll tell you my own behavior. Tell me if I act have acted wrong. I would number one. I would never put a woman in that kind of uncomfortable position. I, I don't like to make other people uncomfortable through an act of mine, okay? So I, I would be very careful not to do that. But in my day, when I was, uh, you know, uh, a celebrity, as it were, uh, there were a lot of women I met, and many of them after the show, I would say, want to come back to my place? And they'd say, sure. You know, we'd go back to my place, and eventually that would wind up in... A little bit of afternoon delight. That's completely different. That's uh, well, how, did they see your etchings? That's consensual. Now, now, if somebody wants to say, well, I went back to his place and he gave me some drugs and I got high and then he fucked me, it sounds a lot different, doesn't it? Yeah. But that's not the no. case. I gave them drugs because they asked for them. <laughs> you know, and because I had those years, them. Course, that's what Bill doing. Cosby's been saying all the time. Saying, "Oh, well, I didn't, the, you know." They, well, the nature of the drug, the nature drugs, of the drug he was giving them was different. He was giving them okay. drugs that would make them pass out, and I don't oh, yeah, know. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, but he, I'm saying that they came. You know, they they went a lot. Some of the, at least not all of them, but some of the some of the relationships were. Oh, I'm going back with you. But you know, I'll have a drink. But oh my God, the drink is now making. Yeah, but me I wouldn't. I wouldn't give. I wouldn't give them drug. I, I, I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't give. I have let no, me I have no love for Cosby. Let me I'm finish here. That, you know, they he's saying, "Oh, well, it's drugs. We were all no. doing drugs back then." They, they, they said it was quaaludes. Well, it was People didn't pass yeah, out on quaaludes. Was quaaludes and also, uh, I, you know, you'd, you'd have women ask you for a quaalude. Do you have a quaalude? Mm -hmm. You had a quaalude. Let's yeah. go back to your place. You got a quaalude. You know. Do they do those with alcohol though? Huh. Do you yeah, they, they usually had alcohol. You would never you find alcohol at my place, so yeah. you never. I never mix those drugs with alcohol. Right. Okay, so right there, that shows some sort of forethought. No, but you could you could mix it. I mean, I, I mixed it with uh, wine or champagne uh, and lewds uh, back in the early seventies. I mean, or in the seventies. Uh, yeah, but you're you're not a hundred. But all I'm saying, look, all I'm saying. Is, no, but the girl was. I, right. You know, and my so question she is took a glass of wine and you gave her quaaludes, then she's just blotted. Yeah, but all I'm no, saying is, OK, okay wait, wait a minute. Let me let me make the point I'm trying to make here that that any of these women that I had uh, sex with, uh, that I came back to my place. Maybe we did some drugs that I had available and uh, we got high and we screwed like rabbits. OK, could come back today and say he drugged me. And we had sex. Now my career is automatically ruined. Forget it, because nobody wants to hear what you've got to say. And I can't yeah, say, but wait help. a minute. She well, came back on her own. That's what letter. a trial is for. How did you tell? Well, that's what a trial is for. But where's the trial? Well, these guys, these guys, these guys are losing. A guy like Louis C.K. may stand to lose everything based on innuendo. Right. No. Well, no, at this well, point, no, at this point, it is innuendo. Well, he admitted, yeah. He, he well, admitted. he admitted it. 
But he, it, yeah. but the point he's not is, not innuendo anymore. He he he's, he, he's not okay. going to be. He looked at this and said, "I'm not going down like Spacey went down," and he wrote yeah. uh, as as eloquently as possible. He penned a letter that makes it impossible not to give him a chance. And then he so pulled his dick out. That's what he did for himself. <laughs> now Spacey fucked it all up. Listen, so. he's going to have to go through the rest of his life every time he goes on a stage somewhere with people visioning him with his dick hanging out, you know? Oh, like it's, it's mortifying. People bring dildos to his shows. It's mortifying. <laughs> and he's got to go oh, and his it? wife and his kids. It's just mortifying. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, John. I mean, it got, was to well, the women. John's got his hand let's, in. In a, in a similar vein, what about Richard Pryor? He got back on the stage after basically burning himself up after, you know, like speedballing, whatever he was doing with that drugs. Was drugs though. And yet he was still able to continue his career later, even though people knew he was like screwed up on drugs and, and almost died. But it's, I mean, it's not sex, yeah. but it's still illegal. And he was, was able to, okay, um, so um, maybe he could, yeah. maybe Louie could do that. He didn't, if he okay, wait a minute. Hold okay, on a second. Ma Mark, 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 has, Mark has his hand up. Mark? Okay, go, go for it. Remember Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Of course, he hasn't been doing much recently, but hey. Yeah. Well, no, but he, he, he is believe he doing it. doing children's shows? Well, CBS didn't want him to do another kid's show. You can be damn sure of that okay. one. But it yeah. was but what what I remember was I think he went on some award show like a few months after that. Hear any good jokes about me lately? Exactly. I remember broke, that. Broke broke the house down. Yeah, there's, the, uh, oh, there's one difference there. He was caught masturbating in the back of a porno theater. I know. Down and there and as I said at the time, if you can't jerk off in a porno theater, where can you where jerk off? Where can you jerk off? off? He yeah. victimize anybody but himself, really, right? It was yeah. embarrassing, but he didn't victimize other people. He didn't That's do right. it. That's right. true. That's the difference. How did, how did they figure out that he, he was jerking off? You know, I mean, why would they even single him out? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. So, someone saw him. <laughs> Basically. I mean, there's somebody in a movie. Management, there. There's some guy jerking off. Yeah. Oh, God. Can yeah. you imagine that person's job? So there's a person walking down, up and down the aisles looking for men beaten off and then it's going to kick them out. Is that how it Almost works? Almost likely. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> when we were doing, I remember when we were doing Midnight Blue, I don't remember specifically who it was, but I remember we went to like a gay theater, porn, you know, uh, Disco or something, and they were dancing. The one where you did the dance there, where they were dancing the baby face. Yeah, that, that, and there were that, people that in the was, crowd that in fact, in so fact, they wouldn't be seen on. Yeah, in, in fact, that but, was the scene yeah. we showed before Congress. Right, one before Congress, and, and the guys were just theater. out there with their penises <laughs> yeah. waggling around while they were dancing to baby oh, yeah. face. But wasn't there? I remember at least one. I think when we left, you said, "I think I recognize some guy." In the crowd, but as soon as we turned on the lights, he moved about three story, three three tiers back, so in the end of the darkness, so we wouldn't see where he was. Oh yeah, it was somebody. I don't know. It wasn't Harold Hudson Channer, but it was some 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 somebody from the you know that we knew from local you know public action. I mean, like, uh oh, you know, he doesn't yeah. want to be seen uh, here. Uh, Jeff has his hand up. Oh my uh, God. I remember uh, that on Forty Second Street, there was hmm. every other store was yeah. a porn. Sure was. We used and, to go. I went to many. And you go in there and you watch the movie, whatever, and you come out, and now you walk and you just walk out the door, and you're on Forty Second Street. And everybody goes, "Hey, look who just came out of the one place." That's right. <laughs> that's how we got caught, I'm sure. And and well, that's and, why and, I always lived a very open life and acted like I was a, a pervert. Uh, oh, on, on the radio, so I mean, no why I why I right. played the role on on radio because I said I don't want any I, I'm I'm invincible that way because if I if somebody were to find out that I had pulled out my dick in front of somebody they probably would have gone <laughs> boy that's, that's what I expect Alex. out of Alex <laughs> yeah exactly you know but sure. <laughs> you know uh, all I'm saying is is I think that Louis C K has written a textbook. Uh, example of mm. how to how to how to write yourself out of this thing and how to make a statement about but, this uh, and put yourself you in the best possible light. Now, I think I, his actions were tantamount to basically a rape. 
uh, in that, uh, you know, when he pulls it out. Uh, now, that doesn't mean a rapist can't be forgiven and, and he can't move on no, with his life. No, but, hey, wait a minute. Uh, Phil, to begin you with, you're dead. You're dead. Men. You're dead fucking wrong. And I'll tell you why. Thank you. The, the rape is an act of violence. OK, it's aggression. It's a it's no, it, no, no. Forget about the aggression. Yeah. It's a violent act. It is an attack. It is the same as rolling up your fist and hitting somebody. And what what was this? This wasn't anything near that. Maybe. No, let's ask Renee. Renee, one. Renee, am I right? I mean, rape is a, is a violent act. Absolutely, it's yeah. a violent act. And what and, and what, 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 what was inflicting on those women was disgusting. Yes, and they had no, kids, but no, it's no. not. Yeah. Violent that he act. would still be if that was done in public. Uh, he would still be registered as a Megan Law sex offender. You know, a guy what, that walks up, a guy that walks up uh, to to a age. park and and opens up. Uh, that's his, different uh, too. He didn't know. I mean, that's different too. But he and, did this. And first of all, well, wait a minute. First no of all, Phil, Phil, you're wrong. You're wrong because first of Why? all, he did this in a hotel room. He didn't do it in a park. And secondly, he had, he warned these women ahead of time of what he was going to do. Now, my question is, and I'm going to put the onus on the women now, is why didn't somebody say, no, keep it in your pants? Why did none of the women leave the room when he did it? They all stood yeah. there and watched it. They wanted to see what size it was. Uh, it, 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 it isn't a joke. I mean, my question is, where where is the responsibility of this these women to not have to put up with this by just is turning it, around and walking no, out of the room? It shouldn't be their responsibility okay. to have to not put up with it. No, it should be, it should be responsibility their responsibility when he says, I'm, I, I, do you mind it. if I pull out my dick for you to say no or for you to turn around and leave the room, but not to sit there and stare at it? No, that, that's 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 blaming uh, no, the victim. No, uh, no, I'm no, no, no I'm not. I, it is not blaming the victim of the perpetrator. It is not blaming the victim. It's saying there is no victim because they had. Nah, they nah, had, nah, 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 nah. They, hold on, <laughs> Phil. They had the ability to turn around, walk out of the room, and not have to see it. You don't. Maybe know, they were in shock. No, you just don't know that because you don't know the circumstance of the 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 gathering. Why were they there? Who were they to him? What did they need from him? Well, now that's another question we got to ask here. Yes, he had the power because they wanted something out of him, but they were willing to put up with that because they wanted something out of him. But and so now, wait a minute, it, wait a minute. That so, doesn't make it right. Hey, it doesn't, it, it, it makes it not. It's no all different I'm, than All I'm saying is that what he did was inappropriate, it was inappropriate behavior. Okay. okay. You know. A penis that isn't being shoved in your mouth or in your dick or in your vagina or in your ass is not being used as a as a weapon. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, it is. and no, it's I not. Do. Who are you I'm to say? You. You're a guy. A ask ask uh, Renee. What do you think? I would say in certain circumstances there would be some illegal options to actually try somebody as using it in that, as in a physical yeah. manner like that. So power, I imagine I, Renee agrees with me. <laughs> no, I don't agree with you. No. It's a power. I, I just said the same it's thing. A fucking fluke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You didn't hear it. You didn't see it go back to your bubble land and, and leave it alone. But, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. what we have to do is, I mean, like, for instance, there was this uh, story, the latest story about Kevin Spacey is this mother is talking about her son who was 18 years old, who, by the way, was ha having drink after drink with Kevin Spacey. But he was 18 and he couldn't have gotten those drinks unless he had a false ID. OK. And uh, he said, then Kevin Spacey put his hand down his pants. Well, first of all, uh, what are you doing going into a bar if you can't, you know, if you if, if with a false idea, if you aren't intending to get drunk, you know? And what kind of a message does, and, and we're not saying that Kevin Spacey isn't a pervert here, but what no, kind of message are you, wait a minute, hold on a second, you let me finish, Phil. All what right. kind of message are you sending to Kevin Spacey when you do that action? And are you saying... Hey, no. you know, I'm here because I'm hot for you, and I'm Look, getting drunk with you, and I, I've you know. had, 
I know people that have false IDs, and it wasn't to get drunk; it was to gain access. You know, maybe they oh, wanted gee, to be now in a you're bar. making an excuse. This guy was sitting there with Kevin Spacey drinking drink after drink. Okay. Right. Would Would you not assume that that person legally entered that club? And he and Kevin Spacey, because when you go into a club and you're not going to go in there thinking I'm going to see a 16 year old or a 17 year old or 21 year old. So Kevin Spacey probably said, let's oh, this guy's yeah, now I, I, I don't want to defend Kevin Spacey because I think Spacey is pretty much a creep and not a very nice guy. But you know, one thing that hasn't been asked, what kind of bar was it? Does it matter? Well, what if it was a gay bar? Hey. Didn't Jake LaMotta go what to if it was? What if it was a gay but, bar? I don't care. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But well, if, how, if, how inappropriate would his behavior be if it was a gay sense. bar? He put his it's hand on somebody's bar. pants. At a gay bar? I don't care what bar it is. That if goes I, on all the time at gay bars. Certainly possible, yeah. yeah. If, I go, if I go to a straight bar and I go up to a really attractive woman, buy her a drink, I put my hand down her pants because it's a straight bar, it's okay? Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, that's different. That's no. not how different culture. Dif different culture. You know, there's a different culture bet uh, between men and women and men and men. You know, if, 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 if the trouble with men and men is you get men fucking men and they just won't stop. <laughs> You know, <laughs> whereas with men and women, women will go, well, not tonight. I, I really am not interested. How, how you know, there's far more. The Spacey thing, thing happened huh? how many years ago, you know, because the gay. Oh, oh the, this latest one that I'm mentioning happened a year ago. Oh, OK. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, you know, Mike. In the 70s, wait. the gay culture was oh. a very different place. Yeah. Uh, Mike. OK, I blame also the bar also for allowing yeah. him, the 18 year old, to go into that bar. Mm -hmm. Without really checking his ID, yeah, you know, if if somebody from ABC came around, mm -hmm. happened to walk in and saw that, you would ask to get this ID. Hey, that's a fake ID. You're you're in trouble too. Yeah. So that means the bar's in trouble and the kids in trouble also. Mm -hmm. Yep. Am I well, correct or wrong on that? Yeah. yeah. Somehow right. I remember hearing that uh, young fella actually was working there uh, in the restaurant part of the bar. Okay, not the bar bar. Okay. Right. But he worked there, and now he was off off job, okay? He, he was not working anymore, mm -hmm. and he went in there, and they let him go in. Wow. You know, when I moved yeah, to Miami, they, they say he was, when when I, say when he I, was getting enticed to meet what? Kevin Spacey. Said, oh, yeah, come over here and meet Kevin Spacey. And he may have been on the other side of the restaurant. You know, when I moved to Miami to go to school, uh, when I lived in New York at 18, you could drink at, in those years. Yeah. And then I moved to Miami and the law was 21. Yeah. Well, I was used to going into a bar and, and, and hanging out and doing whatever. So I, you know, at 18, still walked in there like I owned the place and people served me. Uh, mm. I even belonged to a, a private club that was open till five in the morning, uh, so that you know you had to be well, twenty one. But, but uh, then, uh, you know, if this kid had fake ID, wouldn't this bar, which if you say he was employed by them, know right. his age? They already knew how. Yeah, I already knew what his age was. Exactly. Well, he, exactly. But people people can work in a bar if they're younger than tw the uh, age of you know being allowed to drink. <clears throat> they could still work there because they serve food and other things. But they, they, they just can't drink. Right, not allowed to hang out. But they can also can they cannot uh, serve drinks also. Okay, but with, yeah. anyway, so, look, I'm not here to defend Kevin Spacey. I mean, uh, uh, quite frankly, I'm not surprised the guy is a creep. Uh, I've always had that suspicion. He certainly looks like the kind of guy that could be. Uh, but I am talking about you know these the, the various levels of indiscretion. What we've done is we've We've put all these things on the same level with each other. And, uh, you know, there's a difference between murder and robbery. And I think there's a no, difference between there's a, there's a diff difference between the, rape and Exposing and oneself is, is, this, is, a, is a crime, too. You no, know, especially it's not a crime in a hotel. <laughs> Phil, it's not a crime in a hotel room. Yes, it is. No, it's not public. 
uh, nudity. You're not doing it no, in no, a public no, it's place. Not that kind of thing. No, the, uh, Phil, Phil, uh, you're a yourself. cop. Could you arrest somebody for pulling out his dick in a hotel room? If the woman made a complaint, yes. Mm-hmm. If the woman made a complaint, yeah, uh, yes. yes. And then aren't you as yeah. a cop going to say, why didn't you just turn around and leave? No. <laughs> it's not her responsibility. Yes, to turn it is. Wait a minute. Leave. She is in his hotel room. It is her responsibility to turn around and leave. Does it? Doesn't matter, uh, you know. It does matter. It's his she can hotel. Still turn room. around and leave and go to the police and, and, and go to the police. Just, that's in that. Hotel that's, room and he whipped out his dick. That's so. yeah, still that's a true. crime. But no, but that's I mean, fine. here he asks these these women, Location "Can I pull out my important. dick?" And yeah. uh, and the women, uh, none of them seem to have said no. Put it in your pants, Mister, and keep it there. You know, or turn around and leave. I notice you're smiling, uh, Mark. What are you thinking? I'm I'm picturing this in my as I'm, I'm picturing this in my head. That's all. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Want a picture of Louis C.K.'s dick in your head? What well, are you doing? That's pretty what? disgusting. Come on. Well, seeing it is like a back shot, not the front, but just the reaction okay. of whoever it is. Right. You know? Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, we've been joined Alex. by wait a minute. We've been joined by somebody new who obviously has a green screen, and his name is C.D. Goodwin. Is that Ooh. your name? Yes. <laughs> Daryl Goodwin, how are y'all tonight? What, what's your first name? Daryl. Daryl. Yeah. I had. I've been listening for a while. I'm a friend of Amy, so I was waiting for hers. I'm listening for a while, and, yeah. I, and I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> the question that was asked a minute ago: If a guy pulls out his dick in his hotel room, <clears throat> who's the police officer who said I could? Okay. If, if def- there was a complaint by the woman. Right. Which yes. which which is fine, but under those circumstances. I'm a defense attorney. Yes, the police officer could arrest him. I'd have him walking in five minutes, because that may be true. Well, wait a minute. Let him. Let, will you let him finish, Phil? All right. All right. Because I mean, a police officer can. He can. If there's a complaint, then yes, he's going to err on. He's going to err on the the side of caution. He's going to arrest the person anyway. But and this is what I tell my clients a lot of times. You can be arrested for all kinds of bs things it doesn't count until a judge says you're guilty or a jury says you're guilty and in a circumstance like that i could take that case and i could run with it 10 times out of 10 because we're not talking now if if we're talking about if somebody was down in the bar okay you start chatting up some girl so hey you want to come up to the room with me she comes up to the room and at some point you pull out your dick Okay, that's not going anywhere. That is hey. not going anywhere. If you hey, want, it looks like we got and, better call Saul. <laughs> yeah, that's not going anywhere. You can you can arrest the guy or whatever. I'm not, I'm not only going to have have that case thrown out in a heartbeat, but you're going to end up with an internal affairs you know problem at that. Not if there's a complaint. Yeah. Wait a minute, this guy's a no. lawyer, Phil. It, yeah, yeah. You, there, anyone can attorney. anyone can make an, a complaint. But that doesn't mean the complaint's not bullshit. Excuse the, the, the French. But now, if, however, if this woman was, let's say that she was working, you know, let's say that she was, you know, uh, a secretary for the guy down there. And, you know, and there was some sort of influence or some sort of power struggle or something like that, then uh, I still don't think it would go anywhere as far as a criminal act. But you would definitely probably have she would probably have something civil against uh, against the person. But once she but, you know, he didn't he didn't hold her down. He didn't do anything like that. He even said in his. Uh, in, in his statement that has not been refuted as far as I've heard so far, he said, I didn't do anything until, you know, unless I s- asked him. So he even, he not only got consent by having them walk into his room, but he even went even further to ask for consent, you know, to, to do anything else. You know, hey, you want to see my Johnson? Now, and then what if they were she- afraid? Yeah. What if what what if what if they were fearful if they were that if they said no that he was going to do something to them? Is that I'm fear, telling is, you, is this is this is prosecutable. No, is that fear reasonable? If the fear was not reasonable, then no, it's not. Prosecutable. Maybe it was. How do you know it wasn't reasonable? Well, I'd say it was a slightly it, unreasonable was anything, because there was more than one woman. Because wait a minute, because there was more than one. Did he you know hold her down? Did you know did he physically? How about uh, intimidate her? 
No. It depends on the size of the penis. No, wait a minute. But Rob, you have something to say? I've got stories about that. Wait a minute. Half of those. Wait a minute. How about if it's career ending? How about if, if they didn't stand there and watch, it would be career ending? What do you mean? Well, like I said, they, you know, they're in a room. These are these are are, are, are writers or something like that. Is that what this is? They were well, writers and they were with him. So he does this and they feel like if I walk out of here or say something, I might as well just shut up because if not, this could be a career ending mistake for me. Well, that's what I said. If he that's why I mentioned if he had some sort of, you know, able to uh, exert some power over there, like career or something. Now, that's still I still disagree. That would not be prosecutable. <clears throat> It would not be in, in the United States. Well, anything's arrestable. I mean, right. come on. There's got bad arrests all the time, you know. And and I end up going down. They walk out, and it goes away. But but arrestable and prosecutable are two completely different animals. The yeah. the but now but in the scenario you just gave me where it might be career career ending or something like that. I think we're talking more of a civil action. Yeah, yeah. I think she would That's absolutely a, have a civil action. It's against a lawsuit. Her. But yeah, absolutely. I I have no disagreement on that. Yeah. But but you know you can you can get arrested for the craziest nothing BS in the world. Um, it doesn't count until it can be prosecuted. And nothing that has been alleged so far, as far as the Louis C.K. thing, uh, was anything that could be prosecuted. Yeah. Sounds like about this. With the exception of uh, with now, the exception. Now, of course, what Phil might say is, "You're from." Te well, I'm what? not talking about that. That's that, that's statutory rape. I don't care if they consent it or not. That's a whole different animal. Yeah, but what I'm saying, Daryl, uh, Phil might say to you, "Well, you're from Texas. Maybe that's the law in Texas." But this is pretty much be the law everywhere, hey, wouldn't it? In Oklahoma. Hold on, can I finish just... what I'm saying, Phil? I can't <laughs> see you. There's no saying. camera. But I. Well, I'm sorry. Everybody else can see me. All right. Anyway, where are we? Oh, no, every forgot. state has oh, different every state laws. Has di he, he would say to you every state has different laws. But the fact is that I would think that this would be the case in almost every state, right? That what Louis C.K. did in, the, in a hotel room uh, with people who voluntarily came into that hotel room could not be in and of itself considered particularly actionable. I mean, it, you could be legally culpable, but not actionable. If legally uh, th uh, today a woman who i asked her him the question Oklahoma. phil what i asked daryl the question oh i i would agree with you yes i think that uh, again the allegations are that there were no physical coercions or anything like that there may have been his i think his statement was that these these were people that looked up to him or something like that i don't know if they were fans or writers or something like that so yeah he may have been in a position to where you know we'll just call them co-workers yeah you know where he where he was in a superior position um that would definitely i think be actionable but and and phil i agree you know if the woman goes downstairs and said there's this crazy guy up in this hotel room waving his dick at everybody i would absolutely agree that uh, you would be 100 percent within your rights to go up and say come on man we're coming down to the pokey um yeah. but but because that's your job you know, my job is on the back end of it to see, you know, it, was there actually a prosecutable law that was broken? And I practice in Florida and I practiced for a while in Texas. Um, and yes, I agree. Uh, even though all the states are different uh, in something like this, it's going to be pretty much universal anywhere. Right. Well, I, I, did you hear today there was a woman who married her mother in Oklahoma and uh, 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 and, and the woman, uh, the daughter, pled guilty uh, to uh, sod uh, it's not sodomy. Incest. 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 And the right. mother pled not guilty. She may see ten years. Right. Well, the uh, well, no, that's that's a whole different thing because the mother had also at one point married her son, married her son, and that is a law on the books that yeah. is very clear. Children. They can be prosecuted. So well, yeah, that we're today talking, in Oklahoma, that's what's yeah, going on. We're talking <laughs> apples and giraffes here. It's called marriage in, the state in Oklahoma. Of Virginia, you can marry your first cousin. I think anywhere you can marry your first cousin. Really? No, that's disgusting. That tree's not going to fork very well. Well, you know, well, you, you say yeah, that, I mean, well, that's a different wait a minute. story. Mark, Mark nodded his head. Mark, why'd you nod your head? No, no, no. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see. Okay. <laughs> You know, uh, but, the, the, you know, the, all I'm saying is that 
you know, I, I just think that when you put Louis C.K.'s situation, which made the top of the news everywhere uh, tonight, uh, against all these other incursions, such as Harvey Weinstein, who, if, if true, was a terrible person, just did horrible things. Uh, if you if if they're all provable and you know I I have to still stay within that he's alleged and so you have to re maintain that. Uh, Spacey terrible horrible. A lot of these other guys irreprehensible. In the case of Louis C.K., hey the guy picked out pulled out his dick. Who's being embarrassed by that? Probably Louis C.K. And if you think about it, L.B.J. used to do that. All the time. He in used the to White invite House. news people uh, into the toilet while he was taking a dump. <laughs> yeah. LBJ Democrat. would pull it out and say, Who's got the biggest <laughs> And by the but by the way, oh, people oh, I, people I'll reminded be, me people reminded me that if you want to talk about sexual improprieties, Thomas Jefferson was fucking an underage girl, Sally Bowles, who became his became his mistress. Huh? She, oh, Sally she, Hemings, I think was her name. Excuse me. Yeah, she she was owned. That means she was she was a slave. She was being raped. She was being forced to have. No, these but I'm still saying he was still having sex with an underage girl, no matter w what her <laughs> status was. It's not sex. It's rape. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, it's sex. rape. But all I'm saying is. You know, there was a time when, hey, hey, she's she's 13, she's my slave, I'll fuck her. And everybody went, go right ahead, George, go right ahead, Tom. Have your have your way with them, you know. Hey, uh, attorney. How, now, I'm not going to weigh in on that one. Don't even try. I'm not going to weigh in on what that happens? <laughs> No, you don't have to. Hold it, attorney. What happens when somebody's on the side of the road, takes a whiz, cop comes by and arrests him? Uh, you know, that's not a prosecutable crime because his... <clears throat> Think his member was uh, exposed to the public? Uh, it is prosecutable, but I will say that from state to state, the language does vary a little bit. Um, I've actually uh, defended several cases like that, and I have a, a pretty good success rate on those cases because in Florida, at least, it has to be in a position to where you knew or should have known that someone could see you. Yeah. Um, so if you're like behind a tree or something like that and somebody says, hey, there's a guy behind the tree and then leans around, um, then technically, uh, absolutely, the police can arrest him. But yeah. I'm probably going to have some really good success on, uh, on defending uh, let that Let me case. bring you what what let me bring up, let me bring up something. Let me bring up something that uh, I uh, John will remember this. Uh, we, will. Did a, <laughs> we did a we did a dance routine with uh, Marilyn Chambers and a nude black guy. And they were just dancing to music, leaping around, no sex going on, no fondling, nothing. Comes to the, uh, we, we sent t turned the tape into the cable company. They say, you can't run that. We said, why? They said, because his appendage is bobbing up and down. <laughs> And my and argument said, was, well, hers would be too, except she doesn't have that kind of appendage to bob up and down, and you're making a sexual discrimination in this particular case. Well, she had two appendages, a little higher up than the... Than well, and, 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 and they were bobbing all over But in the those place. days, she didn't have the implants, and they weren't that oh, profound. Well, they didn't, they okay. didn't really wiggle a lot, okay? Well, you know, all I'm saying is yeah. that somehow the penis has always... Had a bad time, you know. I mean, what what do they do in some museums? They cover, you know, uh, a, a statue's penis they cover with Michael a fig leaf. David again yeah. with the, you know, with the with the with the, with the, the leaf, the, uh, the leaf. Yeah. No, we also did it. We also did a recording where or, or or a session where we went to a gay to a gay bathhouse on the yeah. west in the east side. Yeah. And we had to cut out. They wanted us to cut out certain places where the guys were standing around. And walking somewhere so things were moving. If they were standing, it was fine. But if they were even just they had they weren't doing anything sexual, but they were walking over somewhere or they were dancing in the corner or something and things were moving. And I remember I think I at the time either me or one of the other people decided that was going to be the it ain't the meat, it's the motion rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you out, something. I'll tell you something about okay I'll tell you something about that. the about those yeah. days. The last the last week that the Deuce was on, which is a show on HBO, mm -hmm. they had hardcore. 
what he, the guy was doing is he looking. He was looking at a peep show, and yeah. there was insertion and a woman bobbing up and down on his lap. Okay? What channel is that? It's hardcore porn. HBO. This is the same company. HBO. This is the same company that years ago when it was called Time Life, before it became mm -hmm. Time Warner, yeah. that prevented us and kicked us off the air because of what we had on. And our stuff was There's just, you know, it that. was sure. it was just Marilyn Chambers dancing around with the guy with a black guy, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah. Nothing we no, didn't do any hardcore and yet HBO is doing it now. And there's this wonderful ad, if you want to see it on YouTube, that somebody made up as a joke that said, uh, it, is, this, it isn't porn, it's HBO. You know, uh, and, and, and there's set and setting, too, that comes into play. Uh, I, I noticed, know, I I noticed Skin, it's amazing, has the, it's amazing uh, how easily Daryl yeah. changed his location. He is now. Uh, I'm out in a more serene setting. I'm, more off the, I'm off the steps of the Supreme Court. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, that was the Supreme Court. I thought that was the. I thought that was uh, in the in Berlin, the big you know, the Brandenburg Gate. <laughs> By the way, are you? I, I want to know is is Patrick still there, Patrick? Yeah. Yeah, he's here. Patrick, can you hear him. us? Yeah. Hey, I don't uh, think Darryl, so. What software are you using not. for your green screen? No, don't. Let's not get into that, Phil. No, <laughs> Jesus, that's a boring question. <laughs> using a, a, change from dog there's any number of pieces of it's software you can use. Smart Cam. Huh? Try Def Smart Cam. Thank you. Um, Alex, you talk about the women coming out in this. Uh, right now as a fad why do you think this is a fad i think it i think well what it uh, what i think it is i i use that as a uh, it, it it's just that it's become kind of like the uh the, the uh, cause du jour as opposed to and what it does is it diminishes for instance all of this diminishes the cosby case <laughs> you know i mean you start thinking about De yeah. uh, 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 bill cosby and you go well that wasn't half bad compared to harvey you know, no. I mean, I, 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 I a, just think I just I think it's now anybody like, for instance, you have this guy on Shark Tank uh, whose uh, ex-girlfriend of three years is now charging him with rape, you know. <clears throat> and so he turned around immediately and filed suit against her saying, you know, okay. this is ridiculous. But I mean, it's the people are coming out and doing this who maybe have no case and are diminishing the the enormity of of the case against say Weinstein or Spacey or any of these other people, they they it diminishes it and it trivializes it, and we're getting and with the Louis C.K. thing. I think we're down to the point of trivializing it. Yes, uh, 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 Jeff. Uh, I had an interesting discussion with my wife, who's also an attorney. Yeah. And and uh, and she felt very differently about that people are complaining, women are complaining about certain things that happened that theoretically they could have sued the guy. However, there's some problems in uh, using the law. <clears throat> Part of the problem is that the law, like this attorney could right here, could complain and ask questions like, well, how many sex... Uh, families have you had with besides this guy? Uh, how many boyfriends did you have this month? Uh, and and all of those things are often consider the woman to keep her mouth shut and not go to court because it's very expensive and often they can be uh, 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 getting. Um, uh, information about them could get out that, that she didn't want to get out of anyway. Well, besides it's, it's, the, the woman today can call up the local TV, get the information on for no law, and get the guy in lots of trouble. And I know you were complaining about that, Alex, but my, my wife feels like, you know what, this is time the old ways used to be that the guy would win those things in the office when he was the vice president. He could he could do all those things, and if the person the woman uh, got in trouble, they'd fire her. 
today? It, there, there's an entire tool chest that men, that that these lawyers use against women. And, and this is what Jeff was talking about. Uh, defame the victim. Uh, paint her to look like a whore. Uh, get pictures of her wherever she's dressed. Make sure nobody. Uh, I would. Her. I would disagree with you, Renee, on this to this no, extent. Wait a minute. And, an and Phil, whatever you're doing is making so much noise. It's Phil. I'll. 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 I'll uh, put my camera together oh. tomorrow. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll mute. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, what I was going to say, Renee, is that was true several years ago. Today, we're no, much more... Hold on a second. Today, we're much more aware of that. A woman makes a claim now, and the guy has to prove he's innocent. You know, if somebody tomorrow said, Alex Bennett uh, exposed himself to me, and we were in a hotel room together, and maybe it never happened, I would be pretty hard-pressed to get people on my side, even though my side was the right side. Yes, uh, Daryl. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to weigh in. Uh, the, the statement about uh, in civil cases, yes. In civil cases, it's, if a woman brings a civil case against uh, a guy for something like this, then yes, a lot of that information about, I mean, I would certainly be remiss. I wouldn't be doing my job if I wasn't, uh, you know, investigating and, and asking about this to see if there was some legitim legitimacy behind it. Now, in criminal cases, um, I am still able to ask some of those questions, but there is there are more limits on what I can ask as far as like victim blaming and things like that. There are specific circumstances that are very specific that have been, you know, uh, that have been uh, determined by the appellate courts and the Supreme Courts uh, over the years that prevents me from asking certain questions. Uh, or, I mean, it doesn't prevent me from asking the question, but as soon as I ask the question, the state's going to object as relevance and she doesn't have to answer it. So, so you know, there's, there's, uh, it goes both ways. And I, I'll give, I will give in, this is to be considered only a hypothetical. Let's say, for example, that a good portion of my business comes from, uh, let's say, sex positive communities like your your swingers and your your uh, fetish right. communities and things like that. You have a couple who are in a fetish lifestyle and they break up the wife comes back to pick up some of her belongings husband won't let her in the house because she's disappeared for several days um, she files charges against him because he put his hands up to keep her out of the house uh, I'm able to go online onto her social media and I find that she's got a new boyfriend named uh, you know master beater and <laughs> and she's posted pictures of herself covered in blood and bruises and talking about how, you know, oh, look at these beautiful bruises and I love them. I can't wait for my boyfriend master beater to beat me again. Okay. I'm, if that's what someone's in, I'm all for it. Then that's what they can do. But to have her file domestic battery charges against the husband for putting his hands up to, to keep her from coming in the house after she had been gone for a week, um, that's the case that I think that I would it wouldn't it wouldn't even go to a jury. Yeah. So yeah, how are those two things related? He's trying well, to protect uh, uh, his property, uh, uh, yeah. and you're just trashing her. Let me ask a question it, of Daryl. No, no, no. Is this an she's, actual? She's is, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Daryl. Is, is this an actual? Does she have a key to the house? Wait a minute. Let me ask a question she, of Daryl, please. Daryl, right. uh, is this an actual case that you're talking about? <laughs> um, we'll just say it's a hypothetical. Okay. All right. If but does she have a key to the house and is her stuff in there? And she you know, is that her domicile? Uh, it had not been for a week because she left the husband and the and the child and she was only coming in and again this is a purely hypothetical. <laughs> she was she was only coming in at two o'clock in the morning to retrieve her her brand new prized glass anal plug <laughs> you gotta have that with you 
I have a funny feeling this isn't exactly hypothetical, but uh, because you're you're painting too vibrant a picture of this so whole thing. What I'm saying is 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 the it, it, for the domestic battery, and I'm not saying that she is not capable capable of being battered. I'm not saying that. That is absolutely. But if she was trying to seek an injunction or something against him for protection, she has to show that. You know that she's afraid of him. A restraining order, right? That she's afraid of him. That that this has happened multiple times, and that if she doesn't have the restraining order, that uh, it's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. And it's there's zero fear Mm -hmm. because you know she might be bragging somewhere else about how she's seeking out the exact same thing. She's just trying to use the system to get her way on something like that. Mm -hmm. Now. As far as me being able to ask really harsh questions, uh, I'm able to ask harsh questions against the uh, the 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 person who's making the allegations, regardless of it's a, a woman or a man. If it's a man, I'm going to ask just as hard questions, and I'm probably going to make them a little bit more embarrassing to answer. Okay. Um, because it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be even like that. It's supposed to be equal and fair. Phil, turn off your mic if you're going to start screwing stuff in. He did. <laughs> uh, 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 Kevin, you've been quiet tonight. You haven't said a word. Uh, any any comments here? No, I've jumped in a couple of times, but I guess I got stepped on. But oh, yeah, what he's saying is right. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, is if there's there's some kind of back evidence, he's going to use it. Right. So how do you accept that, Renee, what he just said? So I should probably take a step. As far as there is a playbook, and and maybe, Alex, it isn't as prevalent as it used to be, but it's there, and you see it all the time. Um, and it, it isn't, and I'm not saying that this is a – uh, man woman thing because I see it used. I've seen a few of these okay. tricks used within Kevin Spacey's thing, and I'm like, oh yeah, we've seen that before. But it, it, in most cases, they paint the, they go after the victim like it's not well, really a but, victim. But, but sometimes there's people playing the victim, and the person well, who is yeah, truly the victim. Well, let me finish. The person truly who is the victim. Is the person being accused? Now, let me let me say this. If you said uh, to everybody out there, I was alone with Alex last night and he hit me, okay? And now we both are on the same dais together and you say, I hit you last night. And I say, no, I didn't. In this day and age, who are they going to believe first? It's hearsay, though. No, but who are they going to believe first? I mean, because they're going to believe because, Renee. Uh, they're going to believe Renee, and that's well, I, I think guys. You talk about how women, women, how women, how women are hurt by all of this, but guys can be just as hurt by false accusations. And when there's a false act, hold on a second, let me finish. When there's a false accusation made against a guy, they're going to believe the woman first over the guy. And does anybody disagree with me, uh, Daryl? No. No, I don't disagree. I just wanted to, to to make one other observation that came in my mind a minute ago. Um, this is all Hugh Hefner's fault because <laughs> when he was alive, yeah. when he was alive, I think he you know exuded some sort of a force field that protected all of these guys. Mm-hmm. And then when he died, all of a sudden, all the you know the creepy guys that are out there doing these things, they weren't protected anymore, and now That's they're all an falling by the wayside. <laughs> But, but, but no, but the the guy in this day and age, the preponderance of the proof has to be on his part. I mean, I give you the example. I, I keep talking about the example of what happened to me with Laurie Thompson at the Olympics in uh, in uh, Lillehammer, and how uh, her roommate accused me of hitting her. And I had I I wouldn't hit a woman if my I I just don't. That's not my mo, right? We were having an argument out in the uh, uh, out in the hallway about something. And, uh, you know, I I slapped my hand or something when you can't do it it as a forceful gesture, not a violent gesture or a threatening gesture, but just as a, you know, uh, and, uh, she told them, so the next thing I know, I come in in the morning and the Coca-Cola cops, because we were doing it for Coca-Cola 
take me down to the basement and hold me hostage, literally, and say, we hear you hit Lori Thompson last night. And I said, no, I didn't. They said, well, we hear you did. And it was like, I was guilty. Just oh, on the God, word, on the word of this nutcase who was her roommate. Well, finally, Lori came in and they said, well, she's here now. We'll ask her. And Lori went, are you kidding me? Alex wouldn't hurt a fly. And they said, and then they started apologizing like crazy because they could see a, a suit coming if I, if I wanted to do it. But the fact was, I was guilty until proven, until proven innocent. Going back on what Derek was saying, the first thing he'd be doing is going into your Facebook to see if you're a violent person. It was because right. of the country was you were in. Uh, who, who would say? Who would you say would do that? If it was in court, somebody like yeah. Derek would be the first one to go look up the evidence to see if you're a violent person at all anywhere. Yeah. Just remember, it, the, it, the it, legal it, system it, in the country yeah. you were in and, was and, different than ours. No, no. And, you didn't listen to the story, Phil. I, I wasn't. Did. It wasn't the local police I was involved with. It was the Coca-Cola authorities. And yeah, if but they, these they were company. The these were thing. company cops. And but if they, they found one little thing rules. on you, Alex, in, in, in what, did, what did what did you say, Phil? This. Phil, I said they they have to they can't arrest you uh, and detain. Well, you. they detained me. Uh, yeah, no, they, they got to have probable they, cause, uh, and they did. Uh, they did <clears throat> no, they didn't have. They they had only innuendo. But well, all I'm saying the, is, after going through work. that, I realized it's no different, Phil. It, it's no different than walking into a liquor store. And, and this happened to me. I walked into a liquor store, go buy a Coke. I walk out the door and I got guns pointed at me. Whoa, and they're man. telling me, don't move. <laughs> Hold your hands up. And there's another guy standing there waiting with me. So now that's the same situation, except that I got a gun pointed. Did they have a report that somebody that fit your they description? Me, find out the uh, guy hit the alarm by accident. Uh, Pardon me? Oh, so I was saying that they have a, a report that somebody who fit your description uh, had done no. some act that no. they needed no. to detain. What it, what it, in the end, what happened was the gal was reaching for a bag under the counter and hit the uh, armed robbery button. Ah. So me and me and two other guys were standing there, couldn't see half of the cops. And the night before, the Fremont cops had had an accidental shooting. Oh. I was shaking in my boots. <laughs> and then they just hey. come up to us and say, oh, it was an accident. Have a nice day. Hey, Kevin, you were oh. probably guilty. <laughs> yeah, probably. Actually, you want to hear something interesting. At uh, one point in my career, uh, I was uh, I worked for a firm, and we were the uh, uh, attorneys for the FOP, for the Fraternal Order of Police. Yeah. So I got, whenever there was a police shooting of any type, and this is one of the things that, I mean, it was a lot of fun at the time, but in, in hindsight, it kind of gets my goat a little bit. Um, every American citizen is supposed to have the opportunity to you know, speak to an attorney uh, before they're questioned. Uh, now, you have to be very, very clear, and you have, to be, you have to say, I specifically want to speak to my attorney. And even then, you can be sitting in a very small room for hours and hours and hours before you get to see one. Uh, when I was the attorney for the FOP, any time that there was a police shooting, they had an agreement that nobody would talk to that police officer until the attorney came out on the scene. So I would get a call at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'd get to drive my car as fast as I wanted to and, you know, would be able to sit down and speak to the police officer uh, beforehand to go through all the steps uh, to make sure that when he filed his report uh, that he, you know, knew what the backstop was, that, you know, everything was clear. So... There's a reason why uh, police officers and all these shootings and everything, reason why they don't get prosecuted very often is because they get to speak to their attorney before well, anyone else they, does. They still need, for uh, health and safety reasons, to be able to say how many shots were fired. And, uh, and there's a number of things. Yeah, I was never right. in a shooting, and I was a reserve. So, uh, you know, chances of me getting in a shooting were pretty slim. But... Uh, you know, there are certain yeah. questions that they have to answer without an attorney. Yeah. Uh, 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 Rob, no, Rob, not, Rob, not here. There's no questions. Oh, Rob's California. been, Rob's been quiet. Have you, are you thinking about anything, Rob, or are you just listening? 
Just listening. Just listening. Okay. Patrick, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Turn on your camera. We can't see you. For some reason. It's just yeah. not. Yeah. No. Same with Mark and Kevin. Okay. Can talk to theirs? Now, now, Alex, if he's if he's no. naked and he turns on his camera and his dong's, you know, <laughs> you, you're the one that asked him to. You can't be blaming him for you know, anything. No, I, I asked him. So, uh, there, yeah. Uh, uh, you know. It's just that I, you know, I, the thing I guess that bothers me is that this has turned into a into a game. Who can we get next? And the thing is, oh, the press. No. Ho hold on a second. Hold on a second. The press is so willing to report this. Why? Because they can talk about sex. You know, they can imply that w Louis C.K. W you know whipped out his penis. Uh, when have they been able to do this on television before? But it's we've now we're now passing it off as news. Yes, Patrick. Um, Kevin reminded me of something that happened uh, three years ago. I was transferring out of my car into my wheelchair, mm -hmm. and the neighbor lady who happened to be walking by. I did I didn't know her, um, and my. I forgot to wear a belt that particular day, and my pants started coming down <laughs> as I was trying to Now, I was in my garage. The way that I parked in my garage is I backed in. The door is blocking anything from anybody seeing anything. Mm -hmm. But she entered my garage and asked. She must have heard some noise or whatever and asked if she could help. And then she shrieked because... Part of my ass was hanging out, all right? <laughs> Hold on. About an hour later, the fucking doorbell was ringing, and it two police officers. Oh, my God. And they call she called because I exposed myself to her. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. oh. See, I'd take that case any day. Any day. <laughs> like you were saying, too, Alex, that Renee doesn't believe that the man is always guilty no matter what. So the fucking cops are coming. And they said, can we come inside? And I said, no. And I didn't say no because I don't trust <coughs> I, I would I would eat the shit out of a police officer's ass. Believe me. I, be I trust the police before I trust anyone else. But you're not coming in because... I had a towel around me because I was about to get into the shower. Now, how bad do I look? I was in the garage, almost half naked. Now, I'm wearing a towel over myself because the doorbell's ringing like a hundred times. And I knew it had to be an emergency or something. So the cops are there. They want to come in. I said, no. They said, well, we got a report that you exposed yourself to this woman. And I said, really, when? Because it didn't even dawn on me what had happened. They said, like an hour ago or whatever it was, and I said, okay, you see I'm in a wheelchair, right? I said, I have to transfer out of my wheel, out of my car into my wheelchair. I forgot to wear a belt. My pants started coming down, and I was in the garage, and she walked in as I was, you know, pulling my pants up. And the cops <laughs> each other. Confession. It was a confession. Yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't have said a thing. The it, police have discretion. They could have arrested you. Right. Um, it wouldn't have gone anywhere, but they could have arrested you. But, Never speak. But the cops they, they looked at each other and they said Yeah, we'll take care of this. Uh, well, you know, when I say the preponderance of the evidence is on the, I, 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 uh, proving things is on the guy, I think it has become that way. I think that, that, you know, that, yes, it was bad enough when women yelled rape and the cops went, oh, hey, you know, just lie back and enjoy it, that kind of shit, you know, that kind of crappy idea that people had in the old days. And uh, that women were supposed to enjoy it. No, rape is rape, but. If you're accused of rape and you're a guy and you didn't rape that person, the preponderance of, of, of the proof of you having to prove that you, in other words, you have to prove you're innocent in a country where you're supposed, the, the preponderance of the evidence is supposed to prove you're guilty. 
Let, yes, uh, uh, Rob. So I want to go back to Patrick's situation and what Daryl said, which was, don't say anything. Now, this is so preposterous, the way it happens. And I, what could have, what, what, what should he have said? Should have said, you have to arrest me. If you're not saying no and, and explaining the situation, what, what should you do? The, it doesn't matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter if you're completely innocent. It doesn't matter if you were in the next county over. You never speak to the police. You say one thing and one thing only. You say, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions when my attorney is present. Period. You don't let them in your house. And that because what now, what I, it doesn't matter. All right, I'll give you a perfect example. There's some great like videos on YouTube of like these law professors with police officers that get that make this uh, point probably more eloquently than than I am. But uh, let's say the police come to your house and they say that there was a, a report that <clears throat> you were seen uh, leaving the the scene of a murder, mm -hmm. and you say. Uh, and, and you tell them truthfully, I was nowhere near there. Well, what you don't know is there was some Yahoo down the street uh, from the murder who went to high school with you and could have sworn they saw you, and they're the prime witness. Now, not only have you made a statement, but you made a statement that the prosecution can use to show evidence of guilt because you lied. You know, So because you made a statement... You have put yourself in a position to where you now have to find evidence of an alibi of somewhere else where you were. So you've actually done their work for them. Now, the police have a lot of discretion in the situation that you were describing a minute ago um, to make an arrest or not. And fortunately, they used their discretion that time to not make an arrest. But based upon what you said, solely what you said, they have a very low standard to make a decision if they want to arrest you. All it is is probable cause. Probable cause is uh, we think he probably did it. You know, that's yeah. as, uh, that's as far as it is. Let me. So yeah. they could have arrested you at that point, in which case you would have had to have gone down to booking uh you would have had to have posted a cash bond, mm -hmm. uh, or if you didn't have the bond, you would have had to at least spent the night and waited to see the judge the next day. Um, and then you would have had these, uh, if the state decided to prosecute it, you would have had to explain that, yes, you did, you, there were body parts that were hanging out, yeah. <laughs> and, you would, and you would depend on a person like me to interpret the law. Um, I know it sounds... It sounds uh, unnecessarily adversarial. Yeah. To to say that you should never speak to the police. Let me. Uh, let I'm me, not. Uh, I'm uh, not saying yeah. you have to tell the police to go fuck themselves. Kevin's got but his hand them, up. Kevin's got I'll his hand up. I'm happy to talk, but let me have my attorney first. Yeah. Uh, Kevin. So my question is: I was watching one of these Datelines or whatever a week or two ago. And they were investigating a murder, and there was something going on, and they thought they had this guy, and they, they couldn't nail it on him. They brought him back in, but they brought him back in and didn't read his Miranda rights and started talking to him to try to corner him. And then once things got heated up, he called for his Miranda rights. Can they, how how do they do that? I'd never heard that before. I thought once you you're in the in the hole there and under uh, investigation, you're already under your Miranda rights. No, um, until they yeah. the, the Miranda isn't, and this is really frustrating for me because I have a lot of clients that will say, uh, "Hey, the police arrested me. They never gave me my Miranda rights, and they think that the whole case has to go away." Um, I'll be honest with you, the Miranda rights really don't mean dilly squat uh, unless you are making a statement. Um, if you're making a statement to the police, then it is for their benefit that they've read the Miranda rights. But even if they haven't read Miranda to you, they can still get statements in as excited utterances, 
Well, we opened the door. A, we opened the door, and he said, statement. "I did it. I did it. I did it." You know, and then it was a, that yeah, spontaneous, it was a spontaneous <clears throat> interrogation of one right. of the suspects, and there were several suspects. Yeah. Uh, let me. You know, also, I think. I think. I think. Uh, Mark has his hand up. Mark, do you want to ask something? This is really educating, but my best friend down here is ex-police. And I'm the same. What I, I mean, I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing here makes sense, but it's so counter to the logic that I've been taught. Um, I don't know if logic would be the right term, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it, it's really sad that it's come down to this. Yeah. By the way, Phil, it's, your your camera's frozen, so all I'm seeing you is looking down at something. He's oh, moving here. Uh, yeah, just unfroze. But yeah, yeah. Here. It, 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 it's not. I'm setting it, up my rig. Yeah, well, that's rude. I I, I got to be up at five in the morning. Yeah. Uh, okay. There we go. There. There. Well, now I see you in a different. Now it's position. frozen again. It's frozen. <laughs> that one. Oh. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe I ought to get off, but. Uh, well, it's almost uh, the show's almost up. the show's almost over with, so you can I stick only around. Got five for minutes. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, but it, the, our, it, uh, our system is designed. Yeah. It said that you can't be compelled to say anything against you. I mean, you—that's why—that's why the Miranda rights are there, and that's—and everyone should know them. You've heard them a million times on TV, yeah. and and it does not have to be adversarial. The police. They understand. They've been taught this. Yes, making statements and asking you questions and having you say yes, I did it, or or to, uh, um, and to uh, to suggest that your guilt in some other way is huge help to their case. Yeah. But remember, the the state has the burden of proof. You do not have to say anything. So it does not have to be adversarial, but under no circumstances are you, t you know, yeah. to agree to let the police into your house, or are you yeah. to agree to let the police right. search your car, or are you to, you know, make statements unless you have an attorney present, and you have to be sometimes, very specific. Sometimes we stick two suspects in a car, throw a recorder in the front seat, and there's no expectation of privacy in the police car, and the two guys are talking, oh, don't tell them this, don't tell them that, and then all of a sudden you got, you know, <laughs> you got a oh, recording yeah. with them. No, I agree. I, I, I agree. I mean, uh, you guys have, you know, the police have all kinds of sneaky ways. Okay, to, but let's uh, get back. To let's get get, we're getting we're getting far afield from the from the right. thing we were talking about was really uh, the fact that it's it's much harder today for a guy, you know, for, for a guy to prove that he's not guilty once he's been accused by a woman. It's just yeah, men are the victims again. Here well, we well, go. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah. No, now well, no, no, they weren't, but they are now. Yeah. Well, in front yes. of a jury, I mean, men who are accused of sexual crimes, um, from a defense standpoint, it really is, um, uh, it really is kind of a, a guilty until proven innocent. Especially if you're going in front of a jury, uh, you have to be very, very careful in front of the in front of a jury on things like that because today, uh, even with the even with our ability to cross-examine uh, the victims and, and, and everything like that, yeah, um, a jury is much more likely to convict than they are to acquit. Yeah. Um, so now I get a lot of. Fortunately, the law still allows me a lot of uh, leeway as far as motion practice and suppressing certain evidence that was collected in, incorrectly or statements that can't be relied on yeah. um but no and and i and i do specialize i don't i don't, don't like to use the word specialize um my primary focus are sex crimes um and uh be, and, and, and i do it because it is the hardest area to defend right. uh, because it really is today uh, guilty until proven innocent yeah. Especially in front of juries. Okay, listen, we're running out of time here. Uh, there's the theme, uh, but man, we've had a, this has been a great show tonight. Uh, and uh, uh, the name is Daryl, right? We got it right. 
Daryl. Yes. Daryl. Daryl, call again. Man, you are just, you know. <laughs> you're, Amy you're, and, you're, we'll, and, I, and I've got the nice, you know, the background. You got the background and everything sure. for it. And I, I call you know, I mean, uh, I think we were all mes- we mesmerized. And that software again? So I can no, no, down. just fill enough Tried, with it. Uh, <laughs> enough <laughs> with it. <laughs> Uh, the last thing I want you to have is a green screen, okay? Anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it was all very illuminating, Daryl, and we'd love to have you call again. You were really terrific. Uh, thanks to Phil Meyer. Thanks to Jeff Stein. Thanks to Renee. Thanks to John Rockwell. Thanks to Kevin. Thanks to Rob Alfano. Patrick, thank you. Mark, always love having hearing from you. Uh, uh, Mike, thank you. And, and as again, Daryl, uh, please uh, uh, do call us again. Uh, will you all t- uh, wave goodbye to, uh, and say goodbye? To, uh, yeah, there they are. Aren't they cute? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. I just tried to, uh, uh, let me see. I tried to, I can't, well, then I'll do this. Okay, I had to do it physically because I couldn't do it with my thing here. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, Jack and Amy are next. They are here with a a nice little program that is aptly called The Intersection and uh, will be on right after this program. And then at uh, 1 o'clock this morning, of course, we'll have a show called Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.